So, Steve Ratner, you've got new charts putting the deep economic impact of the coronavirus into perspective. Lay it out for us. Well, first of all, Joe is, of course, exactly right when he talks about the fact that had we been better prepared, had we uh, were we moving with more alacrity now to get the testing out there, to get the contact tracing out there, we might be able to reopen the economy sooner. And I think, Joe, a little bit the disconnect, if you will, between what uh, you and I and many people on this show believe about reopening the government, uh, the country, versus what you're hearing from your wealthy friends is the fact that these wealthy friends uh, are looking over the abyss and they're seeing what's going on in the economy. So if you take a look, for example, at retail sales, that chart that you showed just before the break, it's literally gone off a cliff. Uh, the footfall traffic, mm -hmm. and this is measured by people actually going into stores, has dropped 98 percent over the, over the past month. And so you have stores uh, close right and left. You have bankruptcies beginning. Neiman Marcus, which you mentioned on this show, J.C. Penney is headed for bankruptcy. Macy's has its hands full. You've got many malls and stores that are simply never going to reopen uh, because people are not in the stores and are not buying, and perhaps will start buying differently when they come if and when they come back to work. And so, for retailing in America, which was already challenged by online buying uh, from Amazon and places like that, is literally now. Uh, at death's door and is going to have a very hard time coming back. Another thing you can look so, at as an example of how, how far this economy has fallen is airline traffic. We know that the planes aren't flying much, but to put it in perspective, take a look at the size of this downturn, about almost 65 percent drop in airline passenger traffic. That is the dotted line at the bottom. And then look above and you see the two, last two recessions, the red line being what happened after 9-11, which was pretty tough for airline traffic as well, but you can see it barely shows a, a dip compared to what's happening now. And then you can look at the great financial crisis just above in green. But what's also interesting to see is if you look out over the right, and we don't have too many projections like this, the, the International Air Traffic Asso Travel Association doesn't see travel air traffic coming back to anything like normal until the end of the year. And even then, <laughs> might be, say, 10 percent below normal, also compared to other recessions where it's come back much more quickly. The point is that even without a second wave, even before you start talking about horrible possibilities like that, we are looking at a very, very slow recovery for things like air travel, which are central to our economy. We should probably say also a word about the fiscal impact. Obviously, right now, money is not the issue. But you mentioned yesterday on the show the impact on the budget deficit. So let's just take a look at what we're talking about there. What we're talking about there is a deficit that, with the new package that was is about to be passed, I think, today by Congress, we will be looking at a $3.8 trillion, that's trillion with a T, oh, dollar deficit God. in the current fiscal year. That is four times what we thought we were going to have before all this hit. Oh. And as you can also <clears throat> see, it does drop back off again as this emergency spending works its way through the system. But we're still looking at deficits of close to a trillion and a half dollars as far as the as far as the eye as far as the eye can see. And let me put this into a context that probably every viewer, business person or not can uh, relate to. It means that for every dollar Washington collects in taxes at the moment, it is spending two dollars on all of its various programs, including the emergency rescue programs. So, Steve, you and I um, differ on, uh, on on some political issues. I've, I've always been a small government conservative, but we've for years been worried about deficits. We've for years been worried about the debt. You actually were part of, I think, Fix the Debt. You were part of an organization that talked about it. And it's gotten to a point now where, you know, Donald Trump was spending money recklessly along with the Republicans in Washington before. We were going to have a trillion dollar deficit we had a national debt that was over 22, 23 percent. I mean, can you even start to get your arms around uh, the impact of all of this? And by the way, I'm worried about my my children getting back to work. I'm worried about my cousins. I'm worried about my my dear friends in Pensacola, Florida, and my relatives in Georgia. I want them to be okay. That's my first concern. But I'm also so concerned about people getting back to work because we got to get this economy going because this debt bomb is going to explode in our face. Can you even can you even begin to grasp? Can economists even begin to grasp the impact? of this deficit spending, I mean, I understand we had to do it, but 
just because you got to amputate a leg in a surgery doesn't mean there's not going to be a massive impact from 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 that necessary surgery. So can you even begin to 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 lay out for us the dangers of these deficits and and, and the national debt spiraling up to twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven trillion dollars? The other uh, dangers are huge. First of all, Joe, to one of your earlier points, Donald Trump inherited a deficit of a bit less than $500 billion. Uh, he then, by his tax cuts and by spending increases that he and Congress agreed to, they actually doubled that. So we went into this crisis about as badly prepared as you could possibly be for a crisis with a deficit that was already going to be a trillion dollars, now headed for close to $4 trillion. And so, we, so that is uh, a basis for this problem. Uh, look, it's going to add to our national debt. We all knew that our national debt was headed to 100 percent of the size of our economy. It is now going to head there even faster than we thought and reach it even faster than we thought. And the consequence of that is that we are going to have to do things in the future that are going to be painful in terms of uh, eventually, hopefully, getting spending under control. But if not, or in addition to that, raising taxes, uh, including potentially on the middle class, because eventually this is going to have to be dealt with. And it's going to come at a high cost to the Americans who are then uh, in the working world paying their taxes. It is going to come at a high cost to people receiving government benefits because they're going to have to be addressed sooner or later. So, yes, we yeah. did do what we, ha we are doing and should do what we have to do right now to attack this virus. But nobody should kid themselves that this is going to come at a huge cost to uh, the economy going forward, to economic growth, uh, to the taxes people pay and to the services they receive. Yeah. All right, Steve Ratner, thank you so much oh, for that sobering bit of news. Thanks, we, we greatly appreciate your input. And Willie, I just want to say as we end this, this block, you know, it's talking about uh, these rich people uh, that, that are tweeting and getting on radio and TV saying, oh, workers need to flood back into work. We're all blessed. All of us here are blessed on this show. Uh, you and I, uh, mainly because of our winnings at the dog track, but all of us are blessed. But I know you are concerned yeah. about your. Yeah, we always go long, right? I, I, Paul Revere. Mm -hmm. I got a, a dog right here. His name is Paul Revere. <laughs> I'll sing the rest of the song later. Um, but 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 you know, I do. I worry about my friends in Pensacola. I worry about my my older kids. Yeah. And like, what's what's the? I, I, I worry about their friends. What's the world? I worry about Mika's daughters. Like, what's the world going to look like? What's the economy going to look like? I worry about my cousins in Georgia and, and my, my cousins across the state of Florida and friends in Mississippi. This is going to be bad. And we need leadership. We need to get this economy started. We just got to get it started safely. Yeah, and that's why no one is pretending this is an easy decision for any of these governors, for any business owner, for the president of the United States. Of course, it's not easy. I have people in my family fighting for their small businesses, trying not to lay off these people who work with them and for them, who've been their family for so long. I hear from friends like you do all over the country who are desperately trying to get that PPP check so they can survive two more months and maybe get through this. This is very real. No one is discounting that pain. But what the doctors are telling us is if you go back too soon, the pain will be twofold or worse. If you flood people back into Las Vegas, if you send people back into restaurants, more people will get sick and we'll be right back where we started or in a worse position than when we started. So we hear and feel, believe me, firsthand a lot of that pain that's happening with the economy. Absolutely. We are blessed. We don't discount that at all. But you can't do it too soon. That's not me saying that. That's the doctor saying it. Absolutely. Up next, we're going to show you those polls from key battleground states that showed Joe Biden ahead of the president overall and among senior citizens. That and much more we'll get, straight ahead. We want to get Casey Hunt and Jonathan Mears take on that when we return on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.